So sometimes people say that the sum of all natural numbers, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus and so on, equals negative 1 twelfth. And some other people say that that idea is ridiculous and the sum obviously doesn't equal negative 1 twelfth. So in this video, I want to talk about why people disagree about the sum of the natural numbers, or in general, why people disagree about the values of certain infinite sums. Now, the first thing we need to realize is that infinite sums are not the same as finite sums. When we talk about finite sums, we can talk about adding numbers, and addition is usually defined as a binary operation. What that means is that it has two inputs. So I have my first input here is three, my second input is four, and the operation I do is three plus four to get seven. And if we want to add more than two things, so if I want to do three plus four plus five, what I do is I first add two of the numbers to get seven, and then I add that answer to the remaining number to get the final result of 12. When we have an infinite sum, this kind of reasoning doesn't really work, because you would have infinitely many pairs of numbers to add. If we have finitely many pairs of numbers to add, we can define the result inductively or recursively. But if we have infinitely many pairs, then that kind of inductive definition doesn't work. So we need a different way to think about adding infinitely many numbers. Now, the key component of an infinite sum is the sequence of terms in the infinite sum. So when we're talking about the sum of all natural numbers, we're looking at the sequence of terms a sub n equals n. So this sequence looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And when we take the infinite sum of all natural numbers, we're taking in this sequence, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, and we're somehow producing a number from that sequence. So we can think about the infinite sum here, sum from n equals 1 to infinity, as a function. So this sum right here, this sum operator, is a function. And what it does is it takes in a sequence of numbers and it outputs some other number as a result. So this function has a domain, which is some set s, and s is a set of sequences of real numbers like this. And then from this domain, it gives us an output, which is in the real numbers. Now, the standard way to define the infinite sum function is to say that the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of some sequence a n, which is in this set, is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from, say, i equals 1 to n of a i. So this says that if we want to find an infinite sum, we take the limit as n goes to infinity of the sequence of finite partial sums. So this infinite sum function is one example of a function that takes in a sequence of numbers and outputs one number, which in this case is the limit of the sequence of partial sums. And if we consider the sequence a sub n equals n, and we plug it into this function, what we get is that the result does not exist because this limit is not defined. We take one plus two plus three plus four and so on, that limit doesn't converge to any number. So if we use this specific definition of the infinite sum function, we can say that this sequence isn't in the domain or that the output is does not exist. But this is not the only infinite sum function that we could choose. There are a lot of other infinite sum functions that people use. And if you take some sequence as an input and you apply two different functions, in this case, two different infinite sum functions, then you can get two different answers. Now, usually when people consider infinite sum functions, they consider functions that give this same limit answer on sums that converge under the usual definition of infinite sum. So an example of that kind of infinite sum function is Abel summation. So for sequences where the limit of partial sums exists, 
Abel summation will give the same answer as this standard definition of the infinite sum. But Abel summation also gives answers for sums that don't have this limit of partial sums that actually exists. There's another extension of infinite sum that gives us the answer of negative 1 12th. It has to do with the analytic continuation of the Riemann zeta function. But the important part is that it's an infinite sum function that gives the right answer for series that converge under this original definition, but it also gives us an answer for sums that don't converge under that original definition. A similar thing happens in analysis when you start thinking about different types of integrals. The definition of integral that's used most commonly in an intro calculus class is the Riemann integral. And the Riemann integral works for a lot of different types of functions, but there are certain functions that don't have a Riemann integral. So there are ways to generalize the Riemann integral, and the most common generalization is something called the Lebesgue integral. So the Lebesgue integral gives the same answer as the Riemann integral when the Riemann integral exists, but it's also defined for some functions where we can't take the Riemann integral. So there's a similar situation happening with these infinite sums, where sometimes the original definition of infinite sum doesn't give us an answer. It says that the sum diverges or does not exist. But there are ways to define a different function from the set of sequences to the set of real numbers that gives the same answer for sums that converged in the old definition, but that also gives us results for sums that were divergent before. So the main point I want to make with this video is that if you're going to argue about whether the infinite sum of some sequence equals a certain number, you should start by making sure you agree on the definition of infinite sum. Because a lot of times when people disagree about the value of an infinite sum, they aren't disagreeing about the math. Both of them agree that the same proofs are valid. But what they disagree on is what it means to take an infinite sum. In other words, they're using two different functions, and if you have two different functions applied to the same input, then you can get two different answers. So make sure you agree on the definition of infinite sum. Sometimes I hear people say that the problem when we're arguing about infinite sums is that we have some infinite sum, and the question is what do we mean by equals? But the idea of equals is a very deep axiomatic foundation for mathematics. And it's not something that people usually change. The thing that's really affecting us when we argue about infinite sums is not the equal sign. There's nothing wrong here. The question is really what is the function you're using here? What is the function you're using that takes sequences to real numbers? And that's the thing that you have to get clear when you're talking about the values of an infinite sum.